Do you enjoy European crime dramas? Capitani is one from Luxembourg, and the second season has now arrived on Netflix. Now, I enjoyed the first season, but how is this one? Four years after the events in Manchid, Luke Capitani is a disgraced cop working as a handyman in the station district of Luxembourg City when he's hired to investigate the disappearance of a sex worker. As he looks for clues to discover the killer, he's sucked into the world of drugs and sex clubs. Now, the pace of this show is slow and deliberate, with so many sequences focusing on Capitani struggling to just get through his days. He's not really his own man, with many of his decisions and actions being dictated to him by opposing forces. Now, like I said in the synopsis, it's four years after season one of this show, and we pick up with Capitani in Luxembourg City, and he's approached to find a missing sex worker. Now, this then entangles him into that world, where he then has to navigate drug smuggling, rival clubs, and the local police who are also investigating a lot of the same things that he's working alongside of. The character of Elsa from season one returns, and even though this is in a different locale, her placement here does make sense, and I really enjoyed the conflict that then comes about when she discovers that Capitani is on the periphery of a lot of her cases. Now, I don't think you need to have seen the first season in order to get into this one, but there are small interweaving storylines that will be way more impactful and meaningful if you have seen that initial season. Capitani is still just as gruff and grumpy as he was in the first season, and while it could be a little off-putting at times, his jaded and no-nonsense persona really enhances the character as he weaves his way through questionable morals. There are a couple of storylines that are at play this season, and we can see fairly quickly that they're all semi-connected. But the question that continued through my mind as I was watching was whether or not they'd actually converge into something meaningful, or maybe if they were just parallel storylines where characters would cross between. The storylines do converge at points, and I think for a lot of it, the mystery angles will be somewhat predictable. I mean, you may not guess them right at the start, but I do bet that you can figure out the twists and reveals well before the narrative actually gives them to you. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, when the reveals come, there's not much left in the story to play out, so this continues the slow burn throughout the story. Now, just like in the first season, there are 12 episodes that are each about 30 minutes long. Now, this doesn't seem like a lot of time, but because the pace is slower, this didn't feel like a quick binge to me. And I think that also has to do with the fact that there are just portions of the story where not much is happening, or maybe portions that are just repetitive. We see Capitani follow someone or investigate an angle, either piss somebody off or cause some drama, go home and sulk or maybe drink, and then do the same thing over again. The rinse and repeat portion of the storytelling was a bit bothersome, even though important details are usually uncovered in these segments. I just think to make the story feel like it's dragging less, it would have been beneficial to tell some portions in just different manners, to provide some just needed variety. Now, despite Capitani being grumpy, I did find him somewhat captivating. I mean, he's layered and complex, and he doesn't wear all of his thoughts out where we can easily see them. He's contemplative and brooding, but we also see how his morals and his ideals come into play. Now, he may ride the line of lawful at times, but he's typically very honorable and then driven by integrity. And we see that play out in several different ways where he will skirt the law just in little spots in order to help somebody out who doesn't deserve to be caught up in the legal system strictly because of their circumstances. I mean, he takes into account people's motives and then acts accordingly. There are some side stories in here that are meant to create intrigue and doubt around certain characters, but many times this plays out for too many sequences. I mean, it becomes tiresome, especially when a character that's receiving the focus isn't likable or really even interesting. I mean, I understand why the focus is given due to how everything plays out in the end, but not all of the time is warranted. The cinematography is wonderful. I mean, it's very European in its styling where everything has a very cinematic look and feel to the film quality. Now there's this sequence towards the finale of the show where we get an extended aerial shot and I just loved it. I mean, it did cause a bit of vertigo, but it was beautiful to watch. And throughout the show, the framings are consistently artistic, but not in a weird way that pulls us out of the scenes. I mean, these just enhance the tone and emotion of what's going on, drawing us into the narrative in effective ways. There are also some very intimate shots that put us in close proximity to the characters, giving us more insight into their psyche at that moment, or maybe even letting us see how events are affecting them. Now, because of the story backdrop dealing with murder, drugs, and sex work, you'd think this series would be incredibly gritty, but surprisingly, Everything is rather tame. There's even an angle to the murders that feel very important at the beginning, but it isn't played out enough to make it lasting or memorable. Its inclusion is utilized in the motivations, but that's about it. 
I think there was an opportunity to dive more into that area, which would then have created more intrigue and mystery around why the murders were occurring in the first place. I really like the theme of family that plays throughout the season. In just about every scenario, family relationships play a key part, and these are what maintain the heart of the series, and ultimately, they become the biggest story drivers. Now, most of the relationships are a bit dysfunctional, but that drama helps to make the show more engaging. When we get to the final episode, the story uses the majority of the runtime to give us all the exposition. I mean, some plays out like narration as we start off by listening to a character speak to another, and then that dialogue continues to play over subsequent scenes. The bad guy monologues are a bit much, and not as entirely effective as they probably could be, but at least all of the stories get their resolution, so nothing is really left hanging out in the wind. So overall, the second season of Capitani is a fun mystery, but it plays out for entirely too long. The characters are flawed, which adds some realism to their interactions, but some get more story time that may be necessary, creating scenarios that drag out too much. The same goes for the repetitive sequences, where most of the actions are the same, with only minor story changes. The cinematography looks wonderful, and I really love the family theme that's interwoven throughout. And while this isn't nearly as gritty as it could, or maybe even should have been, there is a dark edge to it all that works for what's being told. There's sex, nudity, a ton of profanity, and a bunch of violence. I give season two of Capitani three out of five couches. So are there any darker crime dramas that you're watching right now? I'd love to get some suggestions in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.